There's a pretty clear indication of just how intense those NAFTA talks are getting in Washington. Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Freeland is skipping out of a meeting for NATO foreign ministers in Brussels, choosing instead to stay in Washington and try to hammer out a deal. Unifor President Jerry Diaz joins me now from Washington. Uh, Jerry, you're privy to what's going on behind closed doors. I know you have ears everywhere. What are you hearing is the latest in the discussions? Well, there is certainly some movement on, in the auto industry talks, uh, the whole issue of rules of origin, content. So there's some good steps, but the key issues were still so far apart. Uh, the United States is not moving on some of our contentious issues. Uh, the whole issue that they have on the table, the elimination of Chapter 19, which is the dispute mechanism. They want all disputes to be handled in U.S. courts, and that's foolish proposal. Since NAFTA started in August of last year, they came after us in softwood lumber, paper, aerospace, steel, aluminum. So for Canada to even contemplate allowing all disputes to be handled on U.S. soil is a non-starter. The U.S. has outrageous proposals on procurement. In other words, if they're awarded a billion dollars worth of work in Canada, Canada and Mexico combined can, build, can bid on a billion dollars worth of work in the United States, but the U.S. is going to control the timing and what such bids. There's just so many foolish issues on the table that the United States isn't moving on. That's why I think an imminent deal is certainly pushing it. Do you think that there's a chance here for the Canadian government? I mean, if they're so dug in, is this something that Minister Freeland, Katie Telford, others who are high level instead of the NAFTA negotiators might be able to get a breakthrough on? Well, hopefully. I mean, there's no question. There's a full court press here going on. If you take a look at the Canadian embassy, there's the who's who of Canadian politics are here. So people are determined. And the Canadian team, I give them full credit. They're, they're being very constructive, progressive. They're here. They're here to bargain. But you can't bargain with yourself either. So the United States this week, I'm kind of watching it. And they've got kind of the Muhammad Ali shuffle going on, the ultimate diversion, because... I don't believe a deal gets done until we fix the main issue, which is the issue of the low Mexican wages. So if you look at the politics of this, Donald Trump ran his election campaign. He walked through the industrial heartland of the United States, pointed to shuttered auto plants and said the problem is Mexico. And he was right. But ultimately, the U.S. is balking at any proposals that the Canadian team is making to fix it. Why? Because they're stumbling on their own hypocrisy. They've got 28 right to work for less states that don't believe in free collective bargaining right here in the United States. So for them to question Mexico's lack of free collective bargaining or protection agreements signed between the so-called union, which isn't a union and corporations. So they're stumbling across their own hypocrisy. So they make proposals that are dealing with labor issues, but are not really getting to the crux of the matter in Canada doesn't need to rush into a bad deal. The U.S. may be pushing for a deal quickly. The U.S. may, uh, Mexico may want a quick deal, but Canada doesn't need one. Well, Jerry, we just have a few seconds left, but with this full court press on and the U.S. wanting a deal, if it doesn't happen this week in principle, do you think it's dead? No, I don't think it's dead, but I think that everybody can take a deep breath and uh, re-engage when it makes sense. Ultimately, Canada doesn't need to buy into a bad deal, and I don't think they're going to do that. Okay. Jerry, always great to hear from you. Pleasure is always mine. Thank you.